Okay guys, for today's lesson, we're actually gonna go backwards to before the kingdom of Judah had been conquered by Babylon and King Nebuchadnezzar. We're gonna learn about uh, a young king who comes to the throne. In fact, this king was only eight years old when he was crowned. I think some of you guys are probably eight years old or somewhere in that range. Can you guys imagine being king of a whole country? I mean, do you think you would know the decisions you needed to make and, and know how to run a whole kingdom? So the Bible says that this young king was a good ruler. Let's go to the Bible and find out what made this young king such a good ruler. So the southern kingdom of Judah had a bad habit. Whenever a good king who loved God was on the throne, the people followed God. But whenever a wicked, disobedient king was on the throne, the people forgot God and worshipped false gods. King Amon was one of those wicked kings, but he only ruled for two years before he was killed. That meant that his son, Josiah, had to take the throne next. Let's look at 2 Chronicles chapter 34 and verse 1. Second Chronicles is right after 1 and 2 Kings, which comes after 1 and 2 Samuel, and after Ruth. So we'll find 2 Chronicles chapter 34. You guys can look in your Bibles and follow along here. And it says in verse 1 of chapter 34 that Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign and he reigned in Jerusalem one and thirty years. So what was unusual about King Josiah? What we see here is that he was made king when he was only eight years old. But just because he was young doesn't mean that he couldn't please the Lord. Remember that you guys are young too, but you can still choose to obey God and bring him glory. You can still please the Lord and serve him. When King Josiah was 16 years old, the Bible says that he began to seek the Lord. King Josiah wanted to learn all he could about honoring God and serving him. By the time he was 20 years old, King Josiah had decided that one of the best ways to serve and honor God was to obey him. Josiah looked around his kingdom. There were still idols set up all over the place from when his father and grandfather had ruled, and he knew those idols would have to be destroyed. Let's look at verse 4 of the same chapter, 2 Chronicles chapter 34 and verse 4. And it says, And they break down the altars of Balaam in his presence, and the images that were on high above them he cut down, and the groves, and the carved images, and the molten images he break in pieces, and made dust of them, and strode it upon the graves of them that had sacrificed unto them. So, we see here that King Josiah had, he commanded that all, the, all of the idols to Baal be chopped into pieces, ground into dust, and sprinkled over the graves of the people who had served those idols. So we see here that Josiah was starting to, he was seeing that he needed to serve God, and this was the first way, the first thing that he needed to do to bring the country into service to God. So King Josiah decided it was time for the people to worship God in the beautiful temple Solomon had built for the Lord. However, the temple was in disrepair. The inside was dirty and broken down because the people and rulers had ignored God. So King Josiah commanded that the temple be repaired and restored. One day, as the workers labored in the temple, priest Hilkiah went into the temple treasury to get the money to pay the works. While he was searching for, for the gold to pay the temple repairs, he found something unusual. We see that, we're going to see here in, in the, when we read the Bible here, that Hikia found a scroll that was covered in dust and had been buried among some other, some other things in the temple and obviously hadn't been used in a long time. So 
Hilkiah gave the scroll to the scribe to be delivered to King Josiah because he realized that this is the book of the law given by Moses. And he knew that the king that King Josiah would want to know about it. So let's look at Second Chronicles chapter 34, verses 18 and 19. Chapter 34, verses 18 and 19. It says, Then Shaphan the scribe told the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest hath given me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. And it came to pass, when the king had heard the words of the law, that he rent his clothes. So we see here that when King Josiah heard what the the books the book of the law said that he tore his clothes and we don't know exactly what part of the law was written on that scroll but it caused King Josiah to break down and cry and he tore his clothes as an outward sign of sadness in his heart the words on the scroll helped King Josiah see that there was still much he needed to do as a ruler to turn the people back to worshiping God. God had sent King Josiah a warning by allowing him to find and read God's word. And God already, God has already given all of you his word in the Bible. He expects you guys to read it, study it, learn from it, and then do what it tells you to do. God has given us his word for our good and for his glory. So Josiah sought counsel from other godly teachers, and he studied God's word and learned what things he needed to do in order to please God and avoid his judgment. Because Josiah had shown sorrow for the sin of his people, God sent a messenger to tell King Josiah that God would not bring judgment upon the land of Judah until after King Josiah died. So Josiah was very relieved. You guys can see here in the picture... King Josiah commanded that all the leaders of Judah be gathered together in front of the temple. It was a very large gathering, and everyone paid attention as King Josiah stood by one of the gleaming giant pillars in front of the temple. King Josiah took the first five books of the Bible, the books of the law, in his hand, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, and he began to read. First, he read the book of Genesis in a loud voice so all could hear. I'm going to read the first few verses of Genesis that he would be reading to these people. We're not going to read everything that he read, but I'm going to read some of it for you guys. So in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, it says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and the darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. So we see that he read about creation, and about Adam and Eve and their sin. Then he read about Noah and the great flood. He read about the Tower of Babel, and how God scattered the nations. Then he read about the call of Abraham. Next, he read about Isaac and his son Jacob, who had twelve sons. Last, he read the entire account of Joseph, who was sold by his brothers as a slave into Egypt, but rescued his family from starvation. So that was a lot to read, but King Josiah wasn't done yet. He was just getting started. The people were still listening as he opened the book of Exodus and began to read. Let's look at the first chapter of Exodus and see a little bit of what he read to to the people. But so Exodus 1, chapter 1, verses 1 through 10, it says, Now these are the names of the children of Israel, which came into Egypt. Every man in his household came with Jacob, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were seventy souls, for Joseph was in Egypt already. And Joseph died, and all his brethren, and all that generation. And the children of Israel were, were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply, and it come to pass that when they falleth out, 
any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. So King Josiah read all about Moses and how he grew up in Pharaoh's palace. And Moses grew up to become God's leader to free the Israelites from, sa from slavery. Then Josiah read about the ten plagues and the parting of the Red Sea. Then he read about Moses receiving the commandments from God on stone tablets. And he read about how God provided for his people in the wilderness. You guys can imagine he was probably tired already. But King Josiah finished reading Exodus, and then he read the entire book of Leviticus, then Numbers, then all of Deuteronomy too. So that was a lot to read. We're not going to read all of that today, but even the amount that we read was quite a bit. And you can imagine he read all five of the first books of the Bible. So why do you suppose Josiah read all the law to the leaders of Judah? He wanted them to hear God's word for themselves, and he wanted to show them just how important God's word is. So after that, King Josiah donated 30,000 sheep and goats and 3,000 cattle for the Passover sacrifice. King Josiah showed the people that celebrating the Passover and worshiping God was very important. King Josiah ruled for 31 years. He was one of the best kings the southern kingdom ever had, but Josiah died in battle and the whole nation of Judah wept for their good and godly king. So the next 22 years were terrible for Judah. They had four wicked kings who did not obey God, one right after another. Let's listen to what the Bible says about the last king of Judah. We're going to be back in 2 Chronicles chapter 36. 2 Chronicles chapter 36, verses 11 and 12. And it says, Zedekiah was one in twenty one was one and twenty years old when he began to reign, and reigned eleven years in Jerusalem, and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord his God, and humbled not himself before Jeremiah the prophet, speaking from the mouth of God. So we have talked about how God always keeps his promises. When we are obeying God and following him, that's a comforting truth, but God also keeps his promises to discipline his people when they are disobedient. When we disobey, God will be patient. God will mercifully warn us and give us a chance to repent of our sin, but eventually God will allow us to suffer the consequences of our sin, and that's exactly what happened to the kingdom of Judah. Now, we learned when we started our lessons on, on YouTube here, we learned that King Nebuchadnezzar had uh, had attacked the the uh, kingdom of Judah, and he'd taken the best of the Israelites back to back to Babylon to be part of the kingdom of Babylon. And that's where we learned about Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and all of the rest of the people that we learned about in the past few weeks. So we learned that King Nebuchadnezzar waged war on Judah and he knocked down Jerusalem's walls and took the people of Judah captive or killed them and then he set fire to the temple and burned it down. The best of the people he took back to Babylon as captives for 70 long years. So we learned that this was the consequence of, this, of Israel's sin, of all those kings that decided they weren't going to serve God and they didn't, they didn't care if their country served God. This is the consequence that the country of Judah received for their sins. Now, God has given you his word, a most precious treasure. In it, we learn who we are and who God is. We learn what God expects of us and how to live in a way that pleases him. We are given warnings to help us make good choices, and we are told about God's love and mercy in sending his son, Jesus, God wants you to value his word. He wants you to study it and then obey it. So I have a memory verse for you guys along those lines. We, we see here that God wants us to study his word and value it. One way we can value God's word is by memorizing the verses that we learn about here in our lessons. That shows God that we want to have his word in our heart all the time. So our memory verse today 
is Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 8. You guys want to turn there in your Bibles, you can. I'll put it up on the screen here for you guys to see. But it's Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8. <clears throat> And that says, The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. So this is a pretty easy memory verse. I'll read it one more time. It says, The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. So this is a reminder to us, something that we can keep in our hearts to remind us that God's word is forever. It's never going to fail the things that are written in God's word, the Bible, are never going to fail. They're always going to be true. And that God wants us to remember these things and hold them in our hearts. So let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer before we close, and then we'll be dismissed here. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the time that we have to hear your word taught today, in this, even, even over YouTube in this manner, when we can't be assembled in, in your house today. Thank you for your love for us and for the constant care and, and companionship in our life and taking care of us and everything. Thank you for the class that you've given us and be with each of the students. Give them a blessing and give them comfort in their lives. Bring us all back to church soon and safely. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, guys, hope to see you all soon back at church.